Hey everyone, Mar again, coming at you with another Star Wars related video. As you can tell from up there, I'm continuing my reviews of the current Star Wars canon material. Today's is Star Wars issue number 39, The Ashes of Jeddah Part 2. Now this issue picks up right where 38 left off, with our OT trio at the mercy of Saw Gerrera's lieutenant, who we find out is named Bethic. And it looks like he actually is going to go through with his threat that ended 38 with a cliffhanger and kill them all, but we know that doesn't happen. The three manage to talk him down, and they remove the hoods, and he agrees to side with them. There's a lot of dialogue going back and forth, as you would expect, because they have to slowly talk him down. And one line that he said sticks out with me, and that is, Pretty words. Saw Guerrero had pretty words too, but his deeds were less so. Then he goes on about Saw attacking civilians and other uh, not-so-nice deeds that he did that uh, when you look at it from the perspective of an Imperial civilian, you could see why certain people would view the whole Rebel Alliance as just a, gr just a big group of terrorists. But out of all of them, Saw's group definitely would fit that vibe with some of the stuff they do, but it's because they don't want the Empire telling them what to do, so it's... Like I said before, it depends on your point of view. Now, Bethic agrees to side with the rebels, though he will not take orders from the higher-ups like Mon Mothma and the other officers. But he will take their supplies, and Leia knows that they'll never take orders, but they just want to fight against a common enemy, the whole, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. Now, at the same time that the trio and Bethic are having their little palaver, Good old Commander has declared Jeddah off-limits to anyone other than Imperial agents. Meaning that everybody who is now on Jeddah essentially has a death sentence. And they're doing this to try to get Bethic and his group of rebels out of there. So that they can collect the kyber crystals that Saw Gerrera had stolen from the Imperials before the events of Rogue One. And use it for something. We all know, given our foreknowledge, that... The reason they're doing this is for the second Death Star. It just shows how far ahead the Emperor was thinking after the first one was destroyed. And uh, they're going to get him by any means necessary. There's that thing. And they also send a Drill Citadel, which other than what its name implies, it hasn't revealed what exactly it does. But I think the name Drill Citadel tells you enough what you need to know. It's just a giant drill now, at his command, stormtroopers begin to burn huts down on Jeddah, and Luke and his allies are there, and this triggers Luke. He jumps out there, lightsaber activated, and starts attacking the stormtroopers. They start firing at him, so he has to run. He basically goes and takes him from the rear, and slashes at him with his lightsaber, yelling, Murderers! And our old uh, wannabe acolyte comments, All of them? The Force is powerful! Remember, Luke at this point is still an untrained adept who is trying to learn about the Force and most of it's self-taught based on what little Obi-Wan managed to tell him and what he's gauging from Obi-Wan's journal. Now, this scene shows that this early on, Luke's anger is his greatest weakness. That and the fact that he is untrained. When combined, a situation like this, he could lose it. I mean, if it wasn't for having an ally, he could have been shot in the back. So he has to learn to temper it. But it also shows just how powerful he can be when he gives into his rage, even for a split second. Which culminates in episode 6 when Vader threatens Leia, he flips his shit, and Vader is soon down a hand. And so after this, after everything he saw, Luke tells Bethic that he understands what's at stake. He agrees to help Bethic on a more personal note, and they decide to take care of the Drill Citadel and... Han has a great little thing there that destroying things like this is their specialty. And that's where this volume ends, and it has me looking forward to volume 3, which comes out in a couple weeks. And like, ooh, damn, I love where this story's going. I still wish that they started doing a comic in between 5 and 6, because I think that period's a little bit more interesting to explore. From where this is going, this is interesting thus far. I just wonder at what point will we get closer to episode 5 but I think a lot of fans are wondering that too. Another little interesting thing is that uh, the characters discuss Rogue One and even mention Jin by name. Luke even inquires about her but he's interrupted by the stormtroopers in their little assault. Makes me wonder if they'll delve into it more. 
I expected them to be mentioned in passing a little bit, considering that they're on Jetta, which was part of the setting of Rogue One, and we have some returning characters from it, mainly Bethic. Some might think it's a bit forced, but considering it's the same planet, it doesn't surprise me that they would mention that. Uh, the artwork, you know, still very good. I, I do love the the way that they draw. Art. They very much resemble the younger versions of the actors that played them, so they get a semi... It's not really... This issue also carries on from its predecessor in showing how a planet is affected when it is hit by the Death Star when it is charging a laser at less than full power. We saw what the planet looked like from orbit. Now we're getting a closer look at the people. We saw a little bit of it in the previous issue, but we are focusing more on the plight of our characters and, of course, some other characters talking about it. Now we get a closer view at it that the people are living in extreme poverty and they really are only there because they are there for faith-based reasons like one group of non-Jedi or, or Sith f force worshippers is mentioned who are reveling in what's going on there so I'm guessing they're a dark side leaning sect and then other people just can't leave so we see that they're just gonna stick with it until the planet finally does die or the Imperial agents get them whichever comes first that was a nice little thing it shows quite a little bit of a contrast from what happened with Alderaan Alderaan was like pulling off a band-aid like that you know hurts but then it's quickly over whereas this it's a slow death it's, it's kind of really like a, a cancer if you want to use a medical analogy it's a slow painful death that you really feel a lot of pain watching and now, they don't comment on it, but I have a feeling that with what he's seeing, Luke is happy that he did destroy the Death Star when he did, so that nothing like this can happen again. And uh, when they do show how the Rebels found out about a second Death Star in this new canon, I have a feeling he is really going to want to make sure that thing is destroyed. We know it is destroyed by Lando in the rest of the Rebels. But he's going to have some interesting inner monologues by that point. Other than that, there's not really much else to say about uh, this volume. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, you guys can always like the video. If you can, please like the video, share it out, leave a comment down below. And please follow me on the social media platforms that are going to be below. I'm mainly active on my Facebook page and on Instagram, but I am starting to slowly get more active on Twitter. And there is a Patreon. I haven't put anything up on there, but I am planning on putting some posts up on there soon once I get off my lazy ass and actually start writing something. Lazy ass artist is lazy. But I'm thinking of doing stuff like um, some Patreon. I don't know if I want to do some Patreon exclusive stuff, but I might. But definitely I'll be taking requests. And if you guys want to help out uh, the Martox videos, that'd be greatly appreciated. Shameless plug. Anyway guys, that's it for this video, and until next time, see you guys later.